hymn is one that I learned as an eight-year-old in primary school. And it tells most of the Easter story. Um, the words are quite simple and they've stayed with me all through my life. Thank you. All right, please all join us. Now feel free to stand or stay seated, whichever you prefer. <laughs> Everybody. My name is Barbara, for those who, of you who don't know me. I last talked um, of my work with uh, the Legacy Organization, but this time I'm going to speak of um, things that happened to me many years ago, of two life-changing decisions that I made. We all make choices every day. We decide what to wear, what to eat. But we don't often make a choice that changes our life forever. To set the scene and give you some of my background, my mother married when she was 21 and died the following year giving birth to me. My grandparents took me in and I grew up in a very happy, loving, and Christian household. I don't think, during the war, I don't think I ever knew what it was like to sleep in a proper bed. Every time the air raid sirens went, I would be rushed across to the air raid shelter, which was dark and damp and full of spiders, and expected to sleep on a pile of blankets. Overhead, we would hear the drones of enemy aircraft passing to drop their bombs on the docks at Liverpool. We were on a direct flight path. And unfortunately, some of those bombs were dropped on us. We were only a tiny village in the county of Cheshire. And my, my grandparents lost quite a number of relatives and friends from bombs that fell and caused direct hits. Opposite to our house was a farm which grew vegetables and cereals 
and most of the farm workers had left to join up for the war. A lot of the heavy work around the place was done by two beautiful Clydesdales, and they were what started my lifelong love of horses. After the war, to my great delight, part of the farm was developed as a riding school. And of course, I was there every spare minute I could, fetching and carrying, sweeping out the stables, learning how to groom horses. And in return, I was taught how to ride. And I became interested in dressage. I was loaned one of their horses, and I took part in competitions all around the county. As the years passed, in my teenage years, I had to cram in as much schoolwork as possible, as well as competing. And when I became 18 and left school, I was given the opportunity of transferring into a, a higher grade where I would be competing in not only national but international events. And when I heard this, I was absolutely over the moon. This was a dream come true. But something in the back of my mind was saying, hang on, how are you going to support yourself? I was allowed to keep prize money, but the horse wasn't mine. And so I made the agonizing decision which absolutely broke my heart. And I left the equestrian life. I went to university and gained degrees in English and history and a Bachelor of Education. And I started my teaching career in a high school in Manchester. And there I discovered that I really had made the right decision, although it changed my life. I realized that I could now support myself and not only that, I could have holidays abroad. When you live in the UK, the whole of Europe is in very easy reach. And in those days, it was very cheap to travel. I met and married my first husband. And when he died, I was five months pregnant with my only child, and I miscarried. After that, I concentrated on my career and became a deputy head teacher. After a while, I felt in need of a change, so I applied for an overseas teaching position. This would mean being out of the country for two years at least, but on my return, I would be almost guaranteed a headship. And so I applied and received offers of a teaching position uh, first of all, at the Royal Naval Base in Valletta in Malta. And the other one was from the RAF base in, in Charlottenburg in Berlin. I didn't have to make a choice straight away, so I decided to go on a holiday to Italy. And so in that summer holiday, the school su summer holiday, in August of 1972... I got on a plane at Gatwick Airport and found myself sitting next to a handsome Australian. We introduced ourselves and found that we were on the same holiday and we fell into an easy conversation. An hour or so later, we landed at Genoa and boarded a coach and started off down the coast Three days later, we arrived in Rome, and he asked me to marry him. I said no, it was far too soon, but um, if he felt, still felt the same, by the time we reached the end of the holiday, perhaps he could ask me again and I'd give him an answer. And so we travelled around Italy for two weeks, talking non-stop, and when we reached Venice on that last evening, in Harry's bar, in the Piazza San Marco, he asked me to marry him again. And this time I said yes. This, of course, posed a huge dilemma. 
which one of us was going to emigrate. We argued the pros and cons well into the night and I made the second of my life-changing decisions and I said that I would emigrate. The following day we flew back to London and he returned here. I went back to my job and in those days you had to give a full terms notice if you were going to leave. So I sent in my resignation and began the colossal job of preparing to emigrate. The worst part of the whole decision, of course, was telling my family. They were very upset, but they realized I was quite determined and gave me their blessing. My friends were a different proposition altogether. They thought I'd gone quite mad, and they did their very best to make me change my mind. The following March, I arrived here and we married as soon as it was legally possible. Before I left the UK, I had a conversation with the minister of the church that I attended, and he quoted to me from the book of Ruth, the King James Version, those beautiful lines which we all know, when Ruth says, Whither thou goest, I will go. And whither thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, I will die, and there will I be buried. Does God have a plan for all of us? I think he does. Does he have any say, any influence in the decisions that we make? I don't think so but he does give her, us all the ability to make up our own minds. Sometimes I look back and wonder what my life would have been like had I made dif different decisions. But that's something I will never know. Thank you for listening.